Shares of Yum Brands got close to an all-time high this week after third quarter profits and revenue came in higher than expected. And once again, Jason, we saw KFC and Taco Bell doing the heavy lifting, um, making up for weakness at Pizza Hut. Yeah, the old saying goes, two out of three ain't bad. And that is essentially Yum's quarter in a taco shell. <laughs> Crunchy taco shell. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I... KFC and Taco Bell continue to shine. Uh, you look at Taco Bell, that's about 30% of total operating profit. Uh, system sales grew 8%. KFC, which is essentially half of the company's operating profit, uh, was another source of strength with uh, same store sales growth of 3%. Uh, if you also recall, earlier in the year, Yum Brands made an investment in Grubhub. Uh, they bought $200 million worth of stock from Grubhub. So that gave Grubhub some much needed capital. Also tied the two together to really focus on getting uh, more sales out there in, in regard to KFC and Taco Bell. Pizza Hut is the worst pizza around. <laughs> it's not good pizza, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, they have some work to do, no question. It seems like an opportune time, given Papa John's weakness. I was just going to say, given everything that has happened over the past 12 months with Papa John's, how is Pizza Hut not taking advantage of this? I think this time next year, we'll have a better idea. and That's mainly because we know they have taken over as the NFL's main sponsor. That has the potential to really help them get this thing going back in the right direction, but we're not going to know, at least for a little while. To Ron's point, they could probably focus on improving the product a little bit. You don't like ketchup on bread? <laughs> oh gosh, harsh. It's not my thing. Wow. But I mean, it's worth noting they've essentially reached their goal of 98% franchised operations. Management's committed to giving back six and a half to seven billion dollars to shareholders through 2019 via repurchases and dividends. So, I mean, as a quick service restaurant. It, it, the pizza is not the best in the world. I don't ever eat at Taco Bell, and I can't remember the last time I ate at KFC. But apparently, people are going there because they're chalking up a lot of sales, and because KFC is delicious. <laughs> I would push back on that one. You know what else Taco Bell does a really good job of? They do a really good job with promotional items. Because one of the things that came out in this quarter was the nacho fries promotion, which. I did not partake in, <laughs> but uh, apparently I was in the minority because that was that was involved in more than a quarter of every ticket they had. Well, and hey, let's relive that Red Sox victory one more time because remember when Mookie Betts stole second <laughs> That's base? Right. They're oh, giving yeah. away a free Doritos Los Taco or whatever it was, and so I, I got to imagine some people went in there and took advantage of that as well. Oh, I love the Mookie. <laughs> Shake Shack falling more than 11% on Friday after a weak third quarter report with negative comps, Ron. Yeah, the report wasn't horrible, but that those top line numbers certainly scare investors when you have a stock that's priced pretty, you know, to perfection, I want to say. Comp store sales down 0.7%, which is actually an improvement from the 1.6% decline last quarter, so, you know, silver lining there. Um, 4% decrease in guest traffic. I'm no Analyst, but I think you probably don't want to see that at a restaurant. Um, they had revenue up 26.5%. That's largely because they keep opening new stores. Um, they did raise full year revenue outlook, though, which is interesting based on those metrics that I just went through. So that's curious. They'll continue to open new stores. They expect to open 36 to 40 additional stores in 2019. That will continue to drive revenue. We obviously need to see, um, see this uh, filtering down into margins and earnings. So let me go back to Taco Bell for a second because. <laughs> <laughs> you look at Shake Shack, and they make a good product, but from a business standpoint, they don't appear anytime soon to be employing any sort of a promotional strategy in the same way that Taco Bell does, whether it's discounting um, or any sort of one-time items. So, To your point about them raising guidance, I'm not entirely sure what rabbit they're going to pull out of their hat to make that happen. A Shake Shack opened around the corner from my house. I've seen no promotion whatsoever. You drive by, you see it or you don't, and, and you either go in or you don't. I've seen nothing about it. Well, and you know how that ends. I mean, Chipotle ran their their business very much that way for a long time. Eventually, something slips, and you've got to start promoting. You know, even after Friday's big fall in the stock price, the market cap of the company is still about 1.8 billion. That means each of the 180 shacks is valued at 10 million dollars. I mean, and 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 that's high. And Ron is here throwing out you know negative comps, and I'm right. thinking to myself, how in the world could each shack be worth ten million dollars? That's uh, still a little high.